from Locomotion Media Group and I'm going to attempt to start recording tutorials and throwing these up on YouTube. I hope you find them useful. I'm not going to have a lot of time to edit these. I probably won't edit them at all, so I'll try to run through things quickly. Today's episode will be about removing text from moving video footage. So I have a nice drone shot here where we have a chorus and the drone is flying up past the chorus and over the roof line but there's something very distracting there which is the Magnolia 801 Avenue. They've got enough text to read here and I don't want them distracted from that. So let's, uh, let's get that out of there. The first step is to give myself a clean mat from which I'm going to paint over. So I'm going to double click this drone footage, pops it up in this window. This is the source window. Then I'm going to use the little camera icon right here to export a frame and we'll call this 801 MagAv. And I'm going to go ahead and import that into the project and it's already put in the right folder but make sure you're organized and stick that somewhere as part of the project so it doesn't get deleted later. Alright, so I'm going to hit OK and file already exists. Confirm overwrite. Yes. Okay, so this is the 801 Mag Avenue. I'm going to drop it in right here. I'm going to get rid of this old one. So this is our 801 Mag Avenue and there's the still file. One sec. Compare that one to that one. Alright, cool. Um, Alright, so what I'm going to do is right click on that and I'm going to say reveal in finder and there it is I'm gonna switch this back to the list view I'm gonna right click on that open that with Photoshop I'm gonna bring Photoshop over here so you guys can see it I'm working on two screens trying to simplify this for one screen alright so what I'm gonna do here is select the portions that I want to paint out. It's the text and it's also the drop shadows for the text. We need to get rid of those as well. This is not exactly squared off, so I'm going to use the lasso tool instead of the square or rectangle marquee. And I'm not trying to select too much more than exactly what I need to paint over. And the reason is what we're going to use is called a content aware fill. And that's going to look at the area right around the selection to kind of make the judgment call as to what colors and textures should be painted in there. So I'm kind of getting close around that. All right, so one thing I'm going to do, select and feather. That's uh, Shift F6. Always try to use shortcuts when you can. Um, it's also under select up here. And so we're going we're gonna to feather this uh, 10 pixels. That's probably too much. Shift F6, I'm going to do it 3 pixels. And that's off screen. Great. All right, Shift F5, nope, that's the fill. Shift F6, three pixels, okay, sweet. Now we're going to do Shift F5, and that is the fill. I'm gonna switch it from uh, white to content aware. And again, this is gonna survey the area around that selection and paint it in to fill it in with what it thinks is appropriate. And it usually does a pretty good job of this. That's good enough for our purposes. So now I'm gonna save and close that JPEG. All right. Now we're going to go back to Premiere and as you can see the JPEG has already been replaced in here and let's see I'm going to drop this out here on the timeline this is actually from a couple seconds earlier it's from like right there yep that'll do it so now we need to make this move with that image right so that's where it goes off screen so we know we need it to at least start but like around right there okay and what I'm gonna do is double click this item and I'm gonna go to the effects tab and I'm gonna take down the opacity just a little bit and I'm gonna make a mask we're gonna use a keyframe to mask here so I'm gonna go ahead with the opacity and draw a bezier free draw a little curve in at the top of that arch and I'm going to draw a uh, I'm gonna feather this up a little bit it's already feathered 10 
you can see the dotted lines show you the start and the ending of your kind of gradient when you feather it it kind of gradiates it from fully opaque to gone um, so now I'm going to take the opacity back up so you can see full opacity what this mat looks like and I'm going to go ahead in here and under the motion tab I'm going to mark the position and scale and we know that's supposed to be there right about there right so what I'm going to do is mark the position and scale there and then as we shrink this back or as the camera zooms back obviously that's going to need to shrink back with it The reason I went all the way to those corners was so that I could have a better gauge of where the uh, kind of what the scale should be at this smaller size. Like that curvature right there should match the curvature of right here. So you know it needs to be a little bigger than it is right now. But that's why I went kind of all the way to those edges was so I would know exactly. And it looks like it's also moving over just a little bit as well. So let's try that. I think that's going to need to be a little bit bigger. Looks like it's overrunning it a little bit because you can, you can see the feather here. So one thing I'm going to do is go to color, drop a little color correction on here, and I'm going to make like a very noticeable change to the color correction here. And that way we can qu kind of quickly like at a glance see where it's at since it, otherwise it's matching. All right, so we're going to move it down here. And basically I'm going to skip ahead a few frames and so it's already outpacing it. So I'm going to move that up. And as you can see, it drops in a new keyframe for me already. It's a little tight there. So I'm going to move it back up. It should be pretty well centered in that area. So you can go to each of these keyframes and move it up and down, try to keep it centered. I mean, it's tracking pretty smooth. So we just need to keep it going through the cross. So I'm going to take this cross dissolve off of the footage for now. Of course, we'll need to add that back. I'm going to zoom in here a little bit, drag that out. All right, that's the end of it. So it needs to match here. And of course, it needs to continue scaling up and it needs to continue moving down. So this is a pretty simple, you know, dropping a mat in over some text to make that go away. Auto saves are so annoying, but they're vital. So, all right, there we go. So now I'm going to uh, back it up a little bit, just make sure that it's scaling it right about the right speed. Center that up again. Now I'm going to take this Lumetri color, the exposure back down to zero, and we're gonna have a look at how the color is shifting. So uh, first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and put that uh, cross dissolve back in that we had there. And instead of fading this drone footage out, and fading this mat out, which will create a multiplication effect, right? So that shape will be more visible than the footage underneath it. And you start to see the 801 peeking out from under it. So we're no longer going to be cross dissolving to show the footage underneath. All right, so I want to go 11 frames and I want to drag the footage that we're fading into up above that make this transition 11 frames and get rid of the cross dissolves on the drone footage. So now we're just fading in on top of the drone footage to fix that issue. I mean, it's looking pretty good, man. It, it really is. It's pretty believable. I don't, I don't think, uh, I don't think the client would have anything bad to say about it. That said, uh, this edge right here is noticeable to me. Um, and you never know when you export it with compression, it can accentuate those types of things. So we're going to see if we can change it. It looks like it started out a little brighter and then got darker because remember we took the screenshot from like right here and everything looks good 
right there. So I'm going to put the exposure keyframe in at zero here, and then I'm going to back it up to where it looks like the building was actually lighter at this point. And I'm going to mess with the exposure, taking the exposure of our mat up. Now this is going to be exaggerated, right? That's way too bright, but you get the idea. Walk it down in baby steps. So that's at zero. I'm going to do 0 0.2. That's very close. 0 0.2. Let's try 0 0.3. Okay. That looks even better. And it automatically puts a keyframe in there for you since there already was one. So now that edge is no longer visible. Great. We've solved the problem. I'm going to export this video and get it out to the client. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed that, learned something, and let me know if you want me to keep making these videos.